Hey guys, Youngblood back with you for another episode of Captain's Log, where we're going to be talking about air-to-air -air versus liberators. Uh, to the person that called me out last time for calling them liberties, I've got a bad habit of doing that. I know it's called a liberator, I just get stupid sometimes. So, um... Well, one of the things I wanted to point out real quick before we even jump in is the clips, uh, at least a couple of them, are actually pre-patched. So you're going to see me spamming rockets at them a little bit more than I do now, uh, just because it's less effective now. But they were really effective before, so keep that in mind. Uh, what I really want to hit on is how you need to engage a Liberator, because they have a lot more armor than you do. They've got more weapons, assuming they've got people in three seats, uh, and that can make it a tough target. That being said, you're faster, you're more agile, and there's a couple weak spots on Liberators that you really want to put yourself in position to uh, be successful in engaging them. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into it. Take a look at this graphic that I've got up on the screen right now. Um, I wanted to hit on these areas that are really the successful points of contact that you can come into on these vehicles. Now... You'll notice that some of the areas are in red, and those are kind of the no attack zones. And this is assuming that you're at an even uh, altitude with the uh, Liberator. So the back is kind of one of those areas that you don't really want to engage them from if you can avoid it. Mainly just because they've got a dedicated tail gunner if it's not a full or if it's a full Liberator, or the gunner switches back to the third seat, uh, meaning they've got a pretty big range of motion that they can attack you from. Likewise, you want to avoid the very front of the Liberator because they've got uh, a cannon up there that they can shoot you with. Now, uh, if they've got the default cannon, it's going to do a lot of damage. Uh, that being said, one thing you really want to watch out for is the tank buster. Is it's going to just shred you. Now, you can still attack the front of a Liberator, especially if you're coming in at almost a diagonal. Uh, my general favorite thing to do is... If I'm coming head-to-head, -head, I like to start shooting a Liberator and then position myself where I can come in from a better attack angle, whether that be behind it or from the side, uh, you know, either on the top. Uh, basically, you want to be able to get those first shots in, and you want to, you know, do your damage while you can, but you don't want to linger around in an area where they're going to have a powerful weapon that can take you out very quickly. It's all about positioning. Along the same lines, you can really attack a Liberator from the front, you know, with a little bit of elevation where he can't get his nose gun at you. Uh, but more specifically, when you're attacking from the back, uh, check this out, this guy's lobbing shells at me, and I said, it's time to get the hell out of here. Well, you don't want to attack from the bottom at all. Uh, one shot from a Zephyr is pretty much going to take you out. Uh, a Dalton's going to do the same thing. And then even if they have a Bulldog on the back, it's going to do a lot of damage. So ideally what you want to do is you want to come in from above on a Liberator, whether that means you get the elevation to come down on them or follow them as they try and do a uh, Emmelman or some sort of maneuver upward. You can then light up the very vulnerable top of a Liberator. So the last couple things I really wanted to talk about uh, was, you know, I mentioned that the rocket pods aren't super effective against them anymore, but they still do a lot of damage, and th there's places where they work really well, like here, where you see this guy is just uh, trying to land on a rock for some reason, or he's flying slow, or your uh, rotary is uh, reloading. Uh, it's all about getting the most damage on the vehicle as possible and using the right one for the situation. So, uh, you know, kind of keep that in mind. More importantly, it's all about positioning. Uh, there I can see that there's only one person in this Liberator, so I'm not too afraid of just following them straight behind. Um, you know, so basically it's all about positioning and getting a lot of damage on them. Uh, the takeaway notes, just to keep it brief and short... Attack from the top, attack from the sides. If you're in those other areas, it better be a hit and run attack so you can get out of there. And it's time for our Don't Be a Dick tip of the week. And this one is brought to you by pilots that have somebody on their tail. And if you're watching this example, like me, who apparently can't shoot for shit. Uh, and instead of just uh, continuing the fight like a man, uh, your decision is to disassemble your vehicle. So instead of actually getting any points... Uh, for even the vehicle crashing from a suicide, it turns into no point. So, thanks a lot, Dick. Alright, so I appreciate you guys watching. I know this was kind of short. Um, I wanted to keep it that way, so I'm not going to ramble too much longer. I uh, wanted to let you guys know that I'm actually thinking about partnering my channel. So, if you were looking through some of my Battlefield content or noticed some things went missing, it's because I removed stuff that had copyrighted material. Um, hopefully you guys don't miss it too much. I'm thinking most of you are here for the planet side stuff anyways. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated on how that goes and I will get back to, uh, ESF versus ESF air combat in the next video. Uh, and we'll be hitting on the, uh, air to air missile maneuvers, uh, and how to avoid those. So, 
Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, hit that sub button if you haven't yet, and I will talk to you later. Take care.